The Rust Borrow Checker helps us out a lot, and it does prevent us from running into troubles, but sometimes it can just feel like it's getting in the way. And it's not like it's just making you have a lot of extra code that you don't really need just to do the things that you want. Uh, let's let's like create an example here. So let's have a struct. Uh, let's say we have like some kind of, I don't know, a number wrapper, or maybe like a vector that holds like X and Y coordinates. So if we have a struct, let's call this like a vector, a vector two, uh, and you have an X, which is, we'll just make this public. Uh, which is, let's say, an F32 and a Y, which is an F32. Okay, pretty standard. We can use this vector to do all sorts of interesting things. And maybe we want to like do vector math with it. We want to like display this out. Let's uh, do a derived debug. Uh, and from that, we can now create some of these. So let's do maybe like a location uh, like of the player. Let's do player location. Player location is going to be this vector two uh, with an X of, I don't know, 10 and a Y of 15. It doesn't really matter for this example. And let's say I want to debug this a few different times. Maybe we're going to do like an an increment or something like that. So let's make this mutable. And I just want to um, uh, to print this out. So we're going to do a debug of player location. And then I want to like do something else with player location immediately afterwards. So player location dot X uh, plus equals to one. And then maybe I want to just in case like just do another debug again. Debug player location. Well, it's a little bit of a contrived example, but it shows off what the problem we're running into is uh, rather, you know, rather well. At this point in time, we're using a moved value. We've given ownership of the player to debug. Now imagine this was a function that does something else, like does collision detection or, or something like that. Well, we've um, it owns this. OK, well, we can just give a reference to player location. But what if we don't care? Like, what if this is a small enough thing in memory that just copying and cloning it is fine? So we could implement clone ourselves or we could implement. We can have just a um, uh, derived macro that's going to do that for us. By doing that, we can now manually clone this. And you'll notice like, OK, debug now gets a cloned version, but uh, it sort of can feel like the uh, the the borrow checker here is just forcing us to add these like dot clones everywhere. Um, and sometimes that's uh, exactly what we want. We want to like be very explicit about it, but Sometimes we want to like just have it happen automatically. Um, let's uh, let's give another example here. So let's say I'm going to implement uh, like add. So impl uh, add for our vector two. So what does this mean? If we take a look, our type output is going to equal this like self. We're gonna we're gonna add a vector two to uh, to our vector two, and then we're going to give that out there. So, well, what is this like with simple vector math like this? Um, we're going to create a new vector from this. So we're going to say self x is going to be uh, self dot x plus right hand side dot x. Y is going to be self dot y plus right hand side that y. All right. But notice we're taking ownership here on the right hand side. So if I want to use this, um, let's go ahead and reset ourselves. We have our player location. Let's have like maybe a player velocity. Equals uh, this is going to be another vector too. Uh, we're going to have x is maybe like 1.0 y is like 2.0. 
Uh, and then I'm going to create like, I'm going to move them. So what we can do is have our player velocity um, just sort of like, I don't know, like a new location uh, equals player location plus player velocity. That works, but we've just like this. This is given over to it. Can we do this again? No, we can't. We can't do this anymore because we've moved the player. Uh, we've moved the location. We've moved the velocity. Now, in this case, I'm OK with just copying it because it's a very simple struct here. It's uh, going to be pretty cheap to copy. And so, OK, we have to do clone and clone and then clone clone. And the reason why I want to do clone here is what if I want to later on do other things? And so even though I know it's a useless clone, but I just don't want to have to write it again later. Well, there is a way to solve this. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but when I was writing this out, my uh, editor was actually suggesting, what if I added in a copy here too? So a copy is a trait. It's an empty trait that basically requires no functions added into it. So it's perfect for deriving. Although I could just do an impl copy for, for this. Um, and what it's going to do is basically say, hey, if, uh, if I am going to give ownership to this and I need to reference it later again, the compiler is just going to auto copy it. So I don't need any of these clones anymore. We can just remove them. And if I save this, Everything just works and it doesn't yell at me about uh, about ownership problems. So what's actually happening here? It's saying, hey, player location. OK, we're going to give ownership of player location at this time um, to this expression. And this is also going to be you know, taken away and you know, change owners. Uh, OK. Oh, wait, but we need it again over here. OK, let's just go ahead. Let's just go ahead and copy this and copy this. Now uh, now we have that one. So it can be a little bit um, strange to work with at the beginning because it is auto copying here. Like it is as if we did a clone manually, but it automatically happens. So um, if you're like trying to have trouble, if you're having trouble like thinking like, when is something happening? Do I actually have the real one? Or do I have like, you know, just a copy of it? It might be good to not derive copy until you get a good feel for when you have to put in clones. Uh, as soon as you've like you're good for that and you you know exactly what's happening, then I would recommend just adding in copy when it's necessary, and uh, and then you can basically avoid having to do all those clones all the time, which is really nice. Uh, so the caveats, like the really big caveat here is let's say you actually don't want to copy something or you think that you have like the original one that's being mutated and updated. And so you're just updating and mutating this and it's all good, uh, but it's not the original one. And so therefore you're mutating a copy, not like a reference. Uh, that's, you know, that could cause you to have problems. Um, that being said, I think that um, if you get used to just not passing uh, maybe like originals around, you can pass in uh, mutable references and then you can still have copy and then mutable reference it when you need. Anyways, I'm hoping that this is helpful and uh, is something that you can pull into your tool set uh, when you want to clean up your code and not have clones everywhere, but still have the power of clones. So with that, uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.